Hello and welcome. My name's Karen O'Connor and you're listening to the amazing Menopause, Marriage and Motherhood. Today I'm talking to Mandy Spooner and I discovered Mandy a few weeks ago. She talks about natural health and the thing that really interested me was this about getting rid of toxic elements. I've just been up on holiday in Port Douglas and the only thing I'm actually allergic to in the entire world is black mould. And it's rainy season up there and there is black mould everywhere. So of course, as soon as I got there, I got really sick and ended up having to come back quite early. So welcome, Mandy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me a bit about your background and how you ended up where you are now. Great question. Well, I am Mandy Spooner, as you said, and I live on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Although it's not so sunny today, it's a little bit wet and windy, so you might even hear some rain, actually. And I have two boys and two dogs. I've got one of them next to me here, actually. And thankfully, just one husband. So that's good. And yeah, as you said, Karen, like I'm, I'm, I'm actually really passionate about health hydration that's a really important part of health and living a low-tox life and uh, contributing to an eco-friendly planet and they're things that are really important to me and I love that I I actually have created a business that has all of those passions in it and I've always been I guess to answer your question how did I kind of get here I I've always been relatively healthy not always I did go through a period of adrenal fatigue and that was actually a real light bulb moment for me because despite going to like doctors and having sleep apnea tests and doing blood tests and doing all of that stuff once I actually fixed my nutrition and I know that because I did a 30-day nutrition program I was a different person and it was a real light bulb moment for me that, ah, nutrition does work. It's not just made up stuff. So that kind of, that that was my my health journey and that led me into my eco-friendly journey. And then from there, that led me into my low-tox journey. What do you mean by low-tox? Let's go to that one first because there's a lot of other stuff, but the low-tox thing really intrigued me because we don't really have what you said about changing your diet I had to do that a few years ago similar kind of things where I basically had to cut out everything and then slowly reintroduce things to see what it was that it impacts my body we don't get how much things impact us but let's go on to the toxicity thing what the low tox lifestyle what do you mean by that Yeah, and that's a really great question, Karen. And interestingly for me, I'm going to say I actually started with products, really removing products with toxins in them. And then that always then leads on to to obviously the food as well. And just, you know, I'm sure you know that we live in a really toxic world and way more toxic than our parents and and their parents did, I, I believe. And and we just we, we can't even walk out the door without breathing in toxins. We eat them and we put them all over our skin. If we're drinking not filtered water, we're drinking them. And if we're not having a filter on our shower, we're showering in them as well. So we're really overloading our body with toxins. Again, as I said, eating and the products as well. So and and then a, a toxic body. If if we're putting all of these toxins in our body, I guess it's like a garbage bin. And if you're not detoxifying, if you're not drinking good water, or you're not eating well, or detoxing your body, then this is all going to accumulate, and you'll become toxins lead to disease and illness and and it starts off, it can start off quite small because it's really the accumulative effect of all of these toxins. I'm not completely tox free at all, but I make a really big effort to really lower the toxins because they're just disruptors in our body. And you may not notice it at first, but it is, it is going on. What toxins have you eliminated and what did you find were the most important ones to get rid of, to cut out of your life? Yeah, I always say, look, you know, important ones. I, I I always say start with the one that you use the most. So if you're using, if it is a, a body cream, a moisturizer, or a, it, just use it. I, I'm I'm always a one at a time 
person. And I'm actually just about to run a challenge in a couple of weeks, which is just four simple steps, one at a time, just pick one thing at a time. So I'll always say pick the thing that's bothering you the most or that you just intuitively know. So it could be bleach. You could be like, I know I shouldn't be using this. That's what I'm going to replace. And actually, I don't know if if we touched on this uh, previously when we chatted, but one of the things that I do and I think is really important to do is ask for help. Because I I didn't know all the answers. And I love now that we all can just put on Facebook and I'm looking to find a non-toxic product to replace my body cream. Has anyone got any ideas? And then you get 20 comments of what you can do. And and there's so many companies now that that literally do non-toxic products. And for me, in eco-friendly packaging, there's one company in particular on the Sunshine Coast that whenever I want anything, so yesterday was laundry liquid, jumped onto their website, typed in laundry liquid, great. Here's a non-toxic, safe laundry liquid that's not in plastic packaging, big tick, ordered, it actually just arrived, which is great. So I, th- I think probably asking for help is is a really big thing, doing one thing at a time. And I, I mean, and if you don't intuitively know what it is you shouldn't be using, just pick one thing and just start there there's there is an app called chemical maze which you can go on and you can have a look at the ingredients of things and there's the red face for that's no good at all and you've got the orange face and the green face doesn't happen overnight it's a big massive learning I interviewed a, a girl last year actually who has been working in this environment for like 25 years and she said I still don't know everything so I, I guess not to beat yourself up It's a journey and just do one thing at a time. That is actually the best advice because I'm kind of, I'm an all or nothing person, you know. If I'm going to do something, then I do it big style. But that also sends me into overwhelm because, so the chemical maze, I had a little red book years ago. Is it an app that's built on that book? I believe it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, I'll have to download that because... When my youngest was very little, she kept getting these red rashes. They weren't itchy or scabby or anything, just these weird rashes. So I started looking at all of the different additives that were in our foods, all of the washing powders, the soaps, the shampoos and conditioners and everything like that to try and figure out what was causing this rash because she was only about 18 months old at the time. And I bought that book. I was horrified as to how many things I could not buy if I was going to cut out the additives and the potential toxins from what the kids were eating. So, yeah, I hear you. What was it that made the biggest difference for you personally? That's a great question. And do you know what? I'm actually going to say my shower filter. That's the Enagic one, is it? Yeah. And interesting, this, is, this isn't a sell at all. But for me, it was a re, another light bulb moment because I've been with my husband for 22 years this year. And when we first met each other, I, I had this dry, itchy back and I would always get him to put moisturizer on it. And of course, for the first six months, that was great. That was wonderful. But after that, he's really, do we really need to keep doing this? And I got my shower filter nearly three years ago. So until three years ago, I was still moisturizing my dry, itchy back, where if I went like that, it would get like, I would just, it was horrible. And then I got my shower filter and hand on heart within two weeks, I remember distinctly laying in my boy's bed and I went to give him a cuddle and I went, oh, that's weird. Oh, and literally it transformed my skin. So for me personally, that was the biggest thing for me. And I know that not everyone has that skin, but it was a real light bulb moment that whilst I'm eating well and reducing toxins and and really reducing plastic bottles and, you know, that, that leach chemicals and all that sort of stuff. So really reducing all of that, I was still actually showering in toxic chemical chlorine water. Yeah. I don't think we realise, do we? Because I I was a fairly high level swimmer and the number of swimmers who had the black eyes, the black bags under their eyes, and it wasn't from tiredness. It's from being in the chlorine all the time. Wow. God, that's quite scary, isn't it? 
And I love what you said before, Karen, in, in terms of all or nothing, that is my personality. So for me to say to, to someone, do one thing at a time, and, and I have done that, which is really good because you would drive yourself crazy if you wanted to change everything at once. Just, yeah, you'd drive yourself mad. I think you do. And it's also, I think it's kind of like going on a crash diet. You're never going to be able to stick at it because you're going to miss things. But if you cut things out one by one so that you don't feel that you're being deprived, just habits are changing. And because you're, if we're talking about food, your whole requirements for food change over time when you start eliminating the stuff that doesn't feel good. I couldn't imagine now going eating a meat pie or anything. And I love pies. I've got to say I love it. But I also know how rotten it makes me feel yeah. if I eat a shop-bought pie yeah. of any kind. Obviously, the better quality ones, it, it makes a difference. But to say to somebody whose diet consists of a lot of that, you've got to change all that and cut it all out, which I have done, I've got to say. I've, got, I've said that to quite a few people. But you can't do it. It's not something you could do easily, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, I, t- I totally get that. And I think just the... The one thing at a time, but I think also with food, and I certainly find this with my body, I'm very in tune with my body, which is really good. So my body will literally tell me what it doesn't like or want anymore. And sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to go, oh, okay, I get you now. But I think our bodies are really good at telling us what it can't cope with. But we're not used to listening to our bodies. We're not taught to listen to our bodies as we're growing up. It's not like people say to us, how do you feel after eating that? Do you feel okay? I know it might have quenched something emotionally for you, but how do you feel physically? We're not taught to analyse that. So people are completely disconnected from their bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you get them to connect or do you get them to connect? No, do you know what? I Look, I I haven't, but it's such a good question and, and you're so right in that we weren't, brought up that way but my boys I speak to them about that about how do you how do you feel and and they're really good at coming to me now and saying I don't feel great after that or I don't like that or yeah so they're really good at that which is really good and I think it's a really good thing to do is to be in tune with your body and I haven't always and I haven't always listened to my body but it's always right (laughs) I'm learning that yeah So what did you used to do and why did you end up here? With my low tox or do you mean business-wise or? Both. So where's your life come from and how did you end up here and what's your vision for the future? Where do you want to go? Well, as I said, when I had the adrenal fatigue, I actually did a 30-day program, a nutritional program, and then that was the massive light bulb for me. So I, I started doing that. I was selling that nutritional program for a few years and and then I came into my eco-friendly journey and I'm again an all or nothing personality and when I find stuff out I find it hard to not act on it and I, and then I just go down that finding out all the information that I can about it so I came across an article by Sarah Wilson I quit sugar and she had in her article was saying that coffee takeaway coffee cups weren't recyclable And I remember reading the article thinking, that's not right. No, you haven't got that right because we're led to believe that they are or I was certainly led to believe that they were. And it turns out they aren't because they've got a plastic lining in the inside of them. So that led me, and I've got this amazing photo actually like way down on my Instagram page, which is, and I've gone like said to people, what is this? And it's a circle and then it's got just a loose plastic lining thing. And it's the plastic lining of a takeaway coffee cup. So that led me down doing all my uh, eco-friendly stuff. And I started with well, I start, I'm still on single use plastic, but I started with the big four, which were water bottles, which I don't drink bottled water anyway. I haven't for a long time, but the straws, coffee cups and plastic bags. And that was then before the plastic ban came in. And now I really educate and inspire other people to not use single use plastic because look, knowing where to start, it definitely is is 
I know it's just, it's just that thing, isn't it? It's like just start. And I know that's not as easy for some people. But now in 2021, it actually is quite easy because there are so many companies out there that will only sell non-toxic, eco-friendly products. So there are alternatives there. So it's, it's an easy uh, thing to do. And then I came across my Enagic water filter and the th- I've always been a really big water drinker. And then when I came across this product, I'm going to say what sold me, and I don't, I don't particularly like using that word, but what kind of got me was that I can actually use it to replace a ton of products in my home. And from an eco-friendly point of view, that made me really happy because I don't buy any products anymore. I have three glass bottles on my kitchen bench and they clean my whole house and I get the water from the machine and I just clean my house with it. So that was like, yes, I don't have to buy any more plastics. So it made actually made my journey easier and I guess kind of catapulted my journey a lot faster, which was really good. And then, as I said, that then the low tox stuff came in because I was like, ah, okay. So it's not just an eco-friendly thing. It's actually low tox, which is really important. And we've been really blessed in our household to not have, a, actually, even funny enough, I was taking my boy to school this morning and he said, we never get sick in our house, do we, mum? And I said, no, it's very, very rare that we do. So we're very blessed in that sense. I haven't had any toxic journeys uh, to speak of, apart from my skin, which was a, a big aha moment. But it I don't know, it didn't seem to make me ill as such. So that's where I am now. As I said, I feel very blessed that I have this business that I, that brings my three passions together. And during my journey, I guess what I saw and came across is that the knock-on effect of me educating people. So I, I don't mind being on camera. I don't mind talking. I don't mind doing any of that. So when I started to educate people, I was then inspiring people. And now I love when my friends say to me, I went to the supermarket the other day and I was going to buy this and I thought of Mandy. So I didn't. And I was like, yes, my job is done. <laughs> so where it's going to go, Karen, do you know what? I'm not hundred percent sure. I actually, I feel I'm coming to a product of my own but I don't know what that is I've just put it out there and because for a long time I've been I guess promoting other people's products and products that obviously that I would only use myself and that I really truly truly align with what you're saying about the toxins and the plastics and the products and everything we moved into the house that we're in now and we have a bioseptic sewer system so it's not just your usual septic tank, it's a bio something breaks it down and then the water goes out onto the paddocks and the garden and waters all that. The number of products that you can't use to, in order to allow that system to work is phenomenal. No floor cleaners. I mean, you probably know all this, but no floor cleaners at all. If I want to mop the floor with any product, I have to go and tip the water down the driveway so that it doesn't go onto the garden and it, because it can't go into the septic tank. Yeah. I mean, I'm quite fortunate because I use Enyo stuff as well, and I've got an Enagic machine. So that's all my stuff taken care of. But I was so shocked because even all the environmentally friendly products, you still can't use them if you got this, I can't remember what it's called, a bio something system. You can't use it. So it was really interesting. I didn't know all that, quite apart from the plastics. And I've got to say, I've got a lot of plastics in my house, which is, but, and that was the other thing, coffee cups. I'd often wondered when you said that about them not being recyclable, I often wonder when you go in the shopping centers and they've got the bins and they have recyclables and non-recyclables, recyclables, and the takeaway cups are in the non-recyclable. I'm like, no, the paper. Never even thought about the plastic lining. Yeah, it's a big problem. It definitely is. Can I ask you, and I can deal with this bit if you're not interested, what caused the adrenal fatigue? I believe it was my, my boys were young at the time. So they, I think they were about two and three and a half, or they might even have been a little bit younger. And I was working, I'm a graphic designer, and I was working for myself and doing that. And this was years ago. So let's just say, oh, no, it was about probably seven years ago. Actually, they would have been older. 
but my all or nothing personality. So, and the the people pleaser in me, and I'm only one person, but I would take on lots of work. So basically I was working late at night and then back up early in the morning with the boys and, and just burn, I guess, burning the candle at both ends and not eating well. So I was doing that, getting up, having a coffee in the morning and then having some toast and then just working and the boys and then having toast again. So definitely a mix of burning the candle at both ends and having two young boys and not eating well. So literally just not looking after myself. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because that's the accepted thing is we burn the candle at both ends. We just push, push, push. We um, feed ourselves things to help us push, push, push. The energy drinks, the Red Bulls and those kind of things, as far as I'm concerned, they should be banned. They are appallingly bad for you. Why would you want to drink seven or eight shots of coffee at once? Mm -hmm. I can't even drink. uh, What I found, because I've got four kids, and every time I got pregnant, coffee was one of the first things that I went off. So, and that was interesting, actually. I hadn't even thought about this till now. What I found is that all the things that I went off during pregnancy are the stuff that aren't good for me. That mm. I can't, I know I can't eat now. Tomatoes is one of them. Well, actually, any of the deadly nightshades. I couldn't eat a lot of the stuff that I would normally enjoy eating. And I never drank a lot of coffee, but coffee was the first thing. And every time, every child I had, my coffees got weaker and weaker after each child until after the fourth one. I have a decaf cappuccino or something, and I've split in headache for the rest of the day. I just cannot take it at all. I'm okay with tea, but coffee, no. And that ties in with what you were saying before about our bodies actually know. And when I was pregnant, my body knew, don't eat the nightshades, don't eat too many legumes, don't drink coffee, don't take any alcohol, all the stuff that I'd normally enjoy doing. No, couldn't do it. It And I think we as well, I always say, that it we know it just takes our mind a lot longer our heart knows and our body knows but it takes our head a lot longer to accept that we can't do that because it's crazy yeah I I always say that we know all of us know what to do we just don't always do that and it's someone had said to me the other day about saying to your children I've got one boy who is not a great eater at all and it's been a 10-year journey and I say to him as your mum I need to be able to guide you onto a healthier path and of course it's the mum son thing that we're butting heads at the moment but a friend said to me why don't you say to him would you feed your dog chocolate because we've got two dogs that he absolutely adores and of course he would say no well I wouldn't do that because it's toxic to them and it's not good for them and it's well it's the same as me feeding you the chocolate and sugar as well so we all know what to do but we don't often do it. One of my boys for probably three years his diet consisted of cheese and Vegemite sandwiches at lunchtime and then pasta with ham and cheese on at dinner time. Uh, or occasionally fish fingers and that was all he would eat he was shocking hated vegetables hated everything he now he eats really healthily he doesn't eat any sugar he doesn't eat any processed foods he's actually really really good one of my um nephews he was the same he'd sit and he'd sob over his dinner because his mum was making him eat green stuff (laughs) oh well you've given me some hope Karen so thank you What do you do now, having gone through all that adrenal fatigue and having burned the candle at both ends and eaten to just keep your body going and to wake yourself up and all that kind of thing? Because that is considered to be acceptable behavior. That's what you're expected to do, not just acceptable. That's what we're expected to do in our society. And there's more and more people who are going, "Mm, yeah, it's not working. It's actually really bad for you. I don't want to do that. What were your thoughts on that and how is your life different to how it was before? Yeah, I love that because I i mean, a lot of people say that we don't know how good we are really designed to feel. And when you have that moment 
where you're like, ah, this is what my body is actually supposed to feel like. This is the energy that I'm actually supposed to have. It's a real like moment. And for me, it's, I don't ever want to feel like that again. And again, because I am so in tune with my body, I am so much better at going to sleep at a reasonable time. And, and of course, there's times where I'll get my second wind and if I've got something to do and I really want to finish it, then I will finish it. But I'm so much kinder on myself. And food wise, again, listening to my body, I know what I can and can't eat. And I'm even starting to get to the point, which is a bit of a shame, and I'm battling with this one that bread's not doing me any good either. So just trying to break up with bread at the moment. Uh, So yeah, look, I feel so much better. And again, said it a couple of times, just being in tune with my body. I, I can, I can feel and see I can just feel the signs coming on and I'm like, okay, I know what I need to do. Just get some salad into me, get some good sleep, drink tons of water as I do, because I know how good I actually am designed to feel. And I don't want to just accept. I have a morning coffee, just my ritual. I do love it. I know they're acidic and and, and I know they're like, it's not the best drink to have, but I do love it, but I, I won't have another one even if I am tired in the afternoon, which is quite rare because I really have got myself to a really nice balanced energy, which is really good. I don't often dip, which is really good. And when I do dip, I then I know that I need to, to change something. So and just, you know what, Karen, I am far from perfect. I am not eco-friendly 100%. I've got a little bit of plastic bottles in my house, but compared to what I could have, and certainly on low tox as well, I make a really big effort, but I'm far from perfect. Love a glass of rosé. And over January, had quite a few glasses of (laughs) rosé. But just balancing it out and being more good than not so good. One of the sayings that had a massive impact on me was the one about there was a guy standing on the beach and he was throwing sea creatures that had been washed up in a storm. He was throwing them back into the ocean and somebody said to him, you can't do all of them. You can't make a difference to everybody, to everything. And he said, well, I made a difference to that one as he threw it into the ocean. And that's what you're saying basically here. Just do one little, one little bit is better than not doing one little bit at all. Definitely. That's beautiful. I really love that. I have heard that story. And I don't know if you actually shared it with me, but I have heard that. And that's really beautiful. Yeah, that's really lovely. And it's so true. Mm, Because I know a lot of people don't start, it's like going on a diet or whatever. And they'll say, oh, well, I've eaten a cake this morning. So there's no point. I'll just carry on feeding myself and I'll start tomorrow. Whereas now after all the stuff I've done, and you're probably the same from what you're saying, I'd just go, okay, eating the cake, but I'm still going to carry on eating to make myself feel good rather than can putting more stuff in to make things even worse. Definitely. Well, it takes a bit of time to do the, start that Monday diet. So I, I, I relaxed and had a great January and that was really lovely. So it was like, okay, February, let's get back into it. But from the 1st of February, I wasn't great. It, it, was, it was that gradual and now I'm back on track. But it, it, it takes time even when you know what to do to get back on track. And in terms of diet and everything, we're all different. I hate all this stuff. Try this diet. This is the answer to everything. No, it's not. I'm like you. I've got very dry skin and joints and everything. And I need a lot of oil in my diet. I've tried a low fat diet. Worst thing I ever did. Well, no, apart from vegan diet. Vegan diet was the worst thing I ever did because legumes are really bad for me. And soy is the worst thing and wheat. So all the protein that I could normally get from a vegan diet is actually doing me more harm than good. So I am, my diet is meat and vegetables with a fair amount of oil in it. That's what suits me. It doesn't suit everybody else. And I think we can all detox, but we've all got to learn how to listen to our bodies. How did you learn how to listen to your body? What happened that made you, what what is the experience for you when you listen to it? The adrenal fatigue experience and the that light bulb moment of, ah, so nutrition does work. And then over I guess over the years, as I started taking things out of my diet, I don't eat eggs anymore and I don't eat meat. I'm a vegetarian. 
but I love eggs and cheese. So going vegan is not something that that I, I want to do now or whenever, I don't know. But I, eggs weren't agreeing with me and I was obsessed with eggs, obsessed, Just love them anyway anytime, love them. But I was noticing that they weren't agreeing with me. And I was feeling really tired after I was having eggs. But I kept ignoring it and ignoring it, ignoring it. And then one day, I literally had my poached eggs again on a Sunday. And I kid you not, Karen, with the click of a finger, I was asleep for three hours. And I was like, okay, I I get I've I've heard you now I've heard you so I guess from that moment and with the bread I'm do I'm still doing it with the bread Mm -hmm. uh it's like okay I heard you the other day yep I was fairly bloated after that yep (laughs) so it's uh as I said we all know what to do but we don't always do it so I'm again far from perfect in that sense but I just it's really in tune now with my body and it's like okay I know what I need to do so for you, it might be a bloatedness or a tiredness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How amazing is our body, though? Mm-hmm. Amazing. It, yeah, it actually blows my mind. And I, I don't know if I said to, this to you, but I, I sometimes I can't think about how amazing our body is because it just blows me away how it just keeps going and going and we abuse it and we pour toxins in it and we turn it acidic and all of this sort of stuff. And it still tries the hardest for us. It does, doesn't it? I hadn't actually thought of that. But, yeah, we do really abuse it and treat Mm -hmm. it appallingly badly. Yeah. And it just keeps going. It just keeps trying to do its best. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it is. It just tries to do its best, doesn't it, until we've caused so much disease or so much acidity in our body and stuff that it, it has to crash and say I can't go anymore I need some help what is the difference water's made for you because I know you've got the enagic water filter I've got an enagic water filter so I've kind of glossed over that but uh, most people don't have one explain what the water filter does and what impact not the shower filter but the actual drinking water filter what impact that has had on you yeah, so that's, I love that you have one. It's amazing. And I've always been a really big water drinker, but I never understood that not all water is created equal. And it's like that once, yeah, you know, we don't know what we don't know. So once you start learning something like with the eco-friendly and the takeaway coffee cups, it's then Dr. Google. What would we do without Google? Not even Dr. Google, but Google. What would we do without Google? So I went on to learning about water. And you may know this, Karen, that on our survival needs list, water is actually the second thing that we need. So we need air, then water, then nutrients. So we can survive weeks without food, but only days without water. So that's how fundamental it is to our health. Every cell, organ and tissue in our body require water to function. And if we're not giving them the water, then they aren't able to function. So that's just really simple. But the the Enagic water, so it's an ionizer, as you know, so it does filter your water. So it's a two stage. Stage one is filter and stage two is where it ionizes your water. So your filtered water goes over the, in this particular model, the titanium plates, which are dipped in medical grade platinum. And it creates antioxidant rich water that's super hydrating. So it actually gets into your cells and it's alkalized water as well. And then, of course, we have the the cleaning element of it because it creates acidic and alkaline waters. You can use the other pH waters to replace products around your home. And as I said, when I bought my machine, that was the bit that I was sold on because it was the eco-friendly side. But always been a, a really big water drinker. And I had a girl actually phone me just this week and she was literally why did I wait so long to buy this machine? She said, I've heard you go on about how hydrating it is and it gets into your cells. She said, I don't have any sloshing in my belly. When I drink it, I don't even feel it sitting in my belly because it's really getting into my cells. So for me, it's it's been amazing because I know that it's getting into my cells and I know that it's detoxifying. And one of my boys, interestingly, who was the one in the car yesterday when I was taking him to school and he said, mum, we never get ill. I used to call him my sick child 
And just before I start, I'm not making any claims at all. As you said, all our bodies are completely different, but they all do need water to function and everyone has different responses. But but I used to call him my sick child and he would, vomiting was his thing and he would always have a cold. And when I was working uh, in an office, it it was literally like, oh, I hope he's going to go to school today or this week. I wonder if he's going to get to school and stuff like that. And I kid you not, and again, not making any claims, but when we changed his water, about a year later, it was actually my husband said, when was the last time Cam was off school? And I said, do you know what? I was literally just thinking about that the other day. Uh, So water is just vital, so vital. Without water, we go into dehydration, constipation. These are just the little things. And then it just really leads into, I believe and I'm not a nutritionist or expert or anything but I do believe that dehydration and the lack of water really is the cause of a lot it's the unrecognized cause of a lot of illnesses and the quality of the water yes the additives that are in the water my daughter my youngest is at school in New South Wales a small country town and they get a lot of algal bloom in the dam there we were on a property and we had access to the dam water and I phoned up the council and said, can you recommend a filter to get rid of the algal, algal bloom? And they told me the only thing they recommended was a chlorinator. I'm, I'm not going to put chlorine in my water, especially not when I've got a rainwater tank yeah. because we're from Western Australia and you get bore water there and they have these fabulous filters and most of them are UV. So you might have to put it through a carbon filter and then put it through a UV filter to break everything down. But it comes out as clean, drinkable water. So in the end, I just phoned up somebody in WA and said, "Okay, we've got this with algal bloom. What do I do? And they told me what filters to get. Mm -hmm. There is no need to put chlorine in the water, but it's the acceptable thing to do. Keely comes home from school and her hair's gone green and she's drinking that water. And there's nothing I can do about it. She's at school. But it's something that people accept. That's Mm. the norm. And I'm quite horrified by it. (laughs) Well, I love that we're talking the same language and going back to toxins. We're just loading our body with toxins while as we're drinking. It's crazy. Yeah. She's not even going in a swimming pool and the water's so chlorinated it's turning her hair green. That's. And she's drinking it. As you say, not all water is created equal and it's it's a real, yeah, it's, yeah, I don't even know what to say. I was going to say it's a real shame, but uh, stronger words, that that is what we're given to drink. You said you've got a challenge coming up about a week after this goes out. Awesome. Tell me about that. Tell me how people can register for it. I'll put the details up on the web page that comes with the podcast so people can connect with you, but talk me through it. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Well, what I'm going to do is do a low tox and eco-friendly challenge. So really, I really want to hold people's hands through this, but I, I want to make it really simple. And it actually start, started as a three-day workshop and I put everything together and I've got a beautiful virtual assistant, love her to bits and she put everything together. And then I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not loving it. I just, just leave it with me. And then we changed it to a challenge, which was <clears throat> a lot longer, 20 day challenge. And she did all the work for that. And I said, it's, it's, there's just something not right about it. I can't work it out. Leave it with me. And then it came to me that I want to keep it so so simple so it's literally four simple steps and the big thing is that I'm there in the group holding your hand what do you want to change I'll give you some suggestions here's how we can do it and just to create engagement in a group where people can share either experiences or this is what I use or this is really good for that so just four really simple steps so I've got a group for that But what I might do is I'll give you my, I can give you my website and I'll give you my Instagram page because the information will be on there as well. Great. That's fantastic. It's actually really good because it's that one step at a time, it, providing that information that you were talking about, the suggestions yep. and everything. Yep. I think it's a great And that's what step one is. Go into your bathroom, get all of your products out, take a photo. 
and then it's step two, then step three, and step four is repeat step one to three. So I'm keeping it so, so simple. And and if someone changes one thing or two things, then it's the start of the journey. And that's what's really important. Just starting, taking action is the key. Thank you so much, Mandy. I've really enjoyed this. Me too. It was really good. I think we could talk for a long time. I reckon we could. There's so much I want to ask you. Head on over to the website for more information about this episode and more information about my guests. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll love you forever. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you next week. Bye.